Uh, hello, everybody. Uh, this is Brother Luke, Sin City Preacher. Welcome to this episode of Bible Talk with Brother Luke. Today I'm continuing the study of the book of Acts. And today I'm going to begin with chapter 18, verse 1. Uh, if you did not see the previous studies on Acts, uh, those studies are already uploaded and available on my YouTube channel, Sin City Preacher. So I hope you will go back and watch this from the beginning. But for today, let's start with Acts chapter 18, verse 1. In the KJV, it says, After these things, Paul departed from Athens and came to Corinth. Well, first of all, what says after these things, that's referring to what was discussed in chapter 17. I think it may be helpful for always keep in mind that the, uh, the, the books of the Bible, uh, when they were originally written, they did not have chapters, uh, division points. They didn't have verse numbers. These were uh, inserted much later uh, for, our, for our benefit, so that I can say, uh, when I want to tell you about a particular verse, I can say what chapter and verse, and you can, you, uh, can easily go find it. Um, but they're not, the, the chapter and verse numbers are not really part of Scripture. And sometimes people get confused because they think that, uh, that the, uh, uh, when a chapter begins, uh, that uh, it's a new subject. But it, it's, it's not necessarily a new subject. It's, it's just continuing with the same uh, subject matter as before. And now this is continuing with Paul's first missionary journey. And uh, now he's, he's left... Uh, where he was in the, in the last chapter, and he's, he's moved on. He says, after these things that happened in the previous chapter, they were just discussed, Paul departed from Athens and came to Corinth. Uh, now, in verse 2 it says, and, and found a certain Jew named Aquila, uh, born in Pontus, lately come from Italy, with his wife Priscilla, because that Claudius had commanded all Jews to depart from Rome and came unto them. Uh, this is just another reason for us to uh, judge the writer of the book of Acts, Luke, uh, as, as a credible, reputable historian. Because he's not just telling about the Acts of the Apostles uh, and that the first 30 years of church history. Boy, my nose is itching. Pardon me. Uh, but he's, he, he's also talking about the history of the region. Uh, and so when it says, because that Claudius had commanded all Jews to depart from Rome, this is a, a historical fact. So that you can well, also understand that, yeah, this is this is a history book, and, and uh, it, it's it's factual. Um, let me read these first two verses in the Amplified. After this, Paul left Athens and went to Corinth. There he met a Jew named Aquila, a native of Pontus, who had recently come from Italy with his wife Priscilla because the Roman Emperor Claudius had issued an edict that all the Jews were to leave Rome. And there's a footnote here. Let me see what the footnote tells us. Uh, uh, related to Acts 18, verse 2, it says, This action, the action of, uh, of uh, uh, Aquila and Priscilla leaving because they were expelled by Claudius, the emperor of Rome. Um, why were the Jews expelled? Um, it says this action may have been prompted by conflicts within the Jewish community caused by the spread of Christianity. So the Jewish community uh, was in conflict uh, over Christianity. Uh, see, originally, uh, Christianity was... Uh, first considered to be a, a 
new sect of Judaism. Uh, the, uh, the first Christians, the first people to believe in Jesus as the Christ and the Savior, uh, they were all Jewish people. And they, they considered Jesus to be the uh, fulfillment of the Old Testament prophecies about uh, a Savior that would come uh, from the line of Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Judah, Jesse, David, and that this, uh, from that family line, a Messiah, a Savior, would come. And so these first Christians were Jewish people who believed Jesus was the fulfillment of those prophecies. Um, so they were originally Jewish people. And when they, they still consider themselves to be Jews, but who believe in Jesus, kind of like today, there's a, there's a sect of people who are called Jews for Jesus. So this is kind of like what we had in the beginning of the church where they were Jews. They were all entirely Jews, no Gentiles until 10 years after Pentecost, when, when uh, Peter was told to, by God to, to, to tell uh, the gospel to Gentiles, Cornelius and his family. But uh, so it was entirely Jewish people who were for Jesus. Uh, so it was really considered to be a new sect of Judaism. And then gradually though, as we go through the book of Acts, and when we also study Romans, Galatians, and Hebrews, we can see that um, two important things uh, had to be resolved. Uh, two, two questions had to be answered and two uh, problems resolved. And that is, uh, well, what about the Gentiles? See, in the beginning, they thought that uh, the Messiah, the Savior, was... He was only for the Jews, not for the whole world. Even though the scriptures said he was for the whole world, um, they didn't really want to accept that in the beginning. Uh, the, the, the Jewish people were very uh, prejudiced against non-Jews. Any non-Jew is considered to be a Gentile. Um, they didn't want them to associate the Jews should not associate with non-Jews. They were definitely not supposed to intermarry. Uh, the result of Jews and Gentiles intermarrying were the Samaritans. So uh, they thought that this was going to be, this Savior was just for Jews. And they had to realize that once God told Peter to preach to Cornelius, and then later on, uh, it became accepted that yes, um, Gentiles, Jesus is for Gentiles too, but they begrudgingly accepted that. Uh, then the other conflict and question is, well, what about the practicing of Judaism? We saw at the beginning of chapter 16 that there were Jews who were going around to the churches and telling people, unless you're circumcised, you can't be saved. Now, circumcision was a... a, a a rite of, uh, of uh, Judaism. Uh, the Jews, would, on, the, on the eighth day of a baby's life, they would be circumcised, and this was required to be a Jew. And so they were trying to impose this Jewish law, this regulation, to impose that on the Gentile, who were now believing in Jesus. So there's a great conflict and argument over that. That was resolved partially at the Council of Jerusalem in, in chapter 16. But so you have the, 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 the questions of, of, well, what do you mean? Uh, Jesus is, didn't come just for the Jews. He came for the whole world. Okay, they accepted that. What do you mean? Uh, circumcision, dietary laws, all the laws of Moses, uh, or should we continue practicing that or not? And as we read particularly Paul's writings, we find that they're, they're we're told to uh, uh, no longer practice the laws of Moses and 
the dietary laws, uh, temple worship, especially animal sacrifices. Uh, so you, they were really, um, even though in the beginning of the church, they were all Jews and they're practicing Judaism, and it was the new Christians were just a new sect of Judaism, they had to eventually realize that, wait a second, Jews and Gentiles are equal, there's no distinction, and that the Judaism has to be left behind. We need to move on. It served a purpose, but it no longer applies. And so these are the things that uh, uh, were, uh, we, we learned from studying the early church history, these arguments that you know, they had to be resolved. Um, so when it says here, speculating on the footnote, they speculate that uh, this, when the emperor told the Jews they had to leave Rome, he said, this action may have been prompted by the conflicts within the Jewish community caused by the spread of Christianity. So the Jewish people, of course, there was a, a lot of animosity to Jewish people uh, against the Christians who, first of all, not only they, did they believe that the Messiah had come and it was Jesus, and most of the Jewish people did not accept Jesus, uh, but, but then uh, they also caused such a stir that, that uh, the Roman government decided, well, let's get rid of all the Jews. They're, we don't want this uh, conflict going on. They're fighting among themselves. Let's get rid of them all. So the emperor, uh, Claudius, he issued an edict that all the Jews were to leave Rome. I'm sure the Jews would be even more resentful now against the Christians. Verse 3 in the KJV says, and because he was of the same craft, he abode with them. This is re referring to Paul. And because Paul was of the same craft, Paul abode with them and wrought uh, for, for by their occupation, they were tent makers. So uh, Aquila and Priscilla were tent makers. Paul was a tent maker. They were able to work together. Um, and verse 4, And he reasoned in the synagogue every Sabbath. Paul reasoned in the synagogue every Sabbath and persuaded the, the Jews and the Greeks. And it said, it said this numerous times in previous chapters. This was his custom. This was his routine. Uh, that's what he would do. Every time he came into a new city, <clears throat> he was his first priority seemed to be he was going to go to the synagogue Tell the Jews uh, that your promised Messiah has come as Jesus. And go, he would go through the scriptures and talk about how the, the prophets all wrote about the Messiah's death, burial, and resurrection. Verse 5. And when Silas and T Timotheus were come from Macedonia. So that's Silas and Timothy. Um, Silas had kind of replaced Barnabas as as Paul's right hand man, and um, and now they have Timothy working with them too. Paul was pressed in the spirit and testified to the Jews that Jesus was Christ. Uh, verse six, and and when they opposed themselves and blasphemed, he shook his raiment and said unto them, Your blood be on your own heads. I am clean. From henceforth, I will go unto the Gentiles. So, uh, he, he's just reached a point where he's just fed up with it. All his efforts with the Jews, uh, for the most part, being um, rejected. Of course, every time he did preach, some of them would believe. Um, but the vast majority wouldn't. And instead, not, not only did they reject Paul's message that the Messiah, the promised Messiah is Jesus, but they, they not only rejected it, they would want to kill him. They even stoned him and left him to dead in, in a previous chapter. Uh, um, I, I believe that was in Antioch. Uh, so they are, they're constantly wanting to kill him. And one time they, did attempt to kill him and thought they had killed him. So now he's at the point where 
uh, even though he always goes into synagogues and preaches about Jesus, every time he enters a new city, he still, uh, now at this point, he's just kind of fed up with them, with their, them continuing to reject and not, not listen. He's proving to them from the scriptures that uh, his case, but uh, now let me see. It says, uh, and when he says, he shook his raiment. Let me read that verse six. I'll read all that in the Amplified. Um, and, and, and because he was of the same trade, he stayed with them and they worked together for they were tent makers. And he reasoned and debated in the synagogue every Sabbath, trying to persuade Jews and Greeks. <clears throat> but when Silas and Timothy came down from Macedonia, that's northern Greece, Paul began devoting himself completely to preaching the word and solemn, solemnly testifying to the Jews that Jesus is the Christ, the Messiah, the anointed. But since the Jews kept resisting and opposing him and blaspheming God, he shook out his robe and said to them, your blood damnation be on your heads, on, be on your own heads. I am innocent of it. For now I will go to the Gentiles. It's kind of like Jesus said, when you go to a city and uh, when they re if they reject your message, dust off your feet and move on. Uh, what, he, what does it say he did with his robe? He said that he shook out his robe. Let me see. What, there's a footnote, B. It says, an act symbolizing rejection. Okay. So he shook out his robe. Um, and and now he's, uh, he's he says, you're... you're your blood, your damnation is on your hands. I did my part. I did what was required of me. And Jesus said, when you've presented the gospel, if they reject it, dust off your feet. Now, this is a good, a good lesson for all of us here on YouTube now. Uh, we, it's not our uh, place. It's, you know, and, and we're not instructed to have ongoing debates and arguments with people that go on day after day, week after week, month after month. We continue arguing with the same people. We present the gospel, they reject it. Okay, it's not, I, I'm not to blame, you're to blame. I did my responsibility, I shared the gospel with you. Now, if you rejected it, uh, it's on you, it's not on me. That's what Paul was saying, saying to them. And I think that's a good attitude for us to all have to, today. Uh, let's not continue wasting our time having these arguments. And, and, and sometimes these arguments, they, they get very, very ugly. Uh, you're better off moving on, finding a fresh person to uh, tell them the good news. Now, uh, he says, now I'm going to go. For now on, I'm going to just talk to Gentiles, he says. Verse 7, And he departed thence and entered, entered into a certain man's house named Justice, uh, one that worshipped God, whose house joined hard to the synagogue. I think it's talking about his, not his, his house be, being built and adjoined to the building, but it's that his, his house being his family members were very um, uh, involved and committed to uh, participating in the synagogue. Uh, and Crispus, the chief ruler of the synagogue, believed on the Lord with all his house. So here we do have a, uh, a chief ruler of the synagogue, and he does believe on Jesus. So it's it's not uncommon for the Jewish relig uh, religious leaders to become believers and believe in Jesus, but the vast majority reject Jesus in his time, and as uh, with all of Paul's efforts and, and uh, the apostles' efforts, to uh, the majority rejects Jesus, but some. Except him. Crispus was one. It says, Crispus, the chief ruler of the synagogue, believed on the Lord with all his house, and many of the Corinthians hearing believed and were baptized. 
Um, let me read this, those verses in the Amplified. Uh, Verse 7, then he moved on from there and went to the house of a man named Titius, Titius, Titius Justice, it says here. There's a footnote, let me see. Verse One early MS reads Titus, two early MS omit the name. Okay. Now, it says Titius or Titus Justice. I'm getting uh, maybe this Titius Justice. I think Titus might be uh, re repronounced as Titus, and and uh, so maybe he this person's name is Titus Justice, and maybe this is the Titus uh, that we uh, we will encounter uh, as we go on. Um, Um, verse 8 at, in the Amplified, Crispus, the leader of the synagogue, believed in the Lord with his entire household, joyfully acknowledged him as Messiah and Savior, and many of the Corinthians who heard Paul's message were believing and being baptized. <clears throat> okay, back to the KJV, uh, verse 9. Then spake the Lord to Paul in the night by a vision. So Paul originally had his, uh, on the road to Damascus, Jesus appeared to him. And then he had uh, many years, 14 years, uh, basically, uh, where there was a delay between uh, Paul getting saved and, and, and Paul going on these missionary journeys. But during that time, uh, um, I conclude that Jesus must have uh, appeared to Paul probably in many visions and instructed Paul. But in, here's, a, here's a, a scripture that tells us this is what happens. Then spake the Lord to Paul in the night by a vision, be not afraid, but speak and hold not thy peace, for I am with thee, and no man shall set on thee to hurt thee, for I have much people in this city. And he continued there a year and six months, teaching the word of God among them. So Jesus tells Paul, don't, don't worry, you'll be safe in this city. Continue uh, spreading the gospel. So a year and a half he's there. And verse 12, And when Gallio was the deputy of Achaia, the Jews made insurrection with one accord against Paul and brought him to the judgment seat, saying, This fellow persuaded men to worship God contrary to the law. So, the Jews are saying Paul is persuading people, the Jewish people, to worship God contrary to the Jewish laws. I don't think they would be concerned if Paul was just talking to the Gentiles, but because he continued going to the synagogues and talking to the Jews, that's what really makes them upset. Verse 14, And when Paul was not was now about to open his mouth, Gallio said unto the Jews, If it were a matter of wrong or wicked lewdness, O ye Jews, reason would that I should bear with you. But if it be a question of words and names and of your law, look ye to it, for I will be no judge of such matters. And he drave them from the judgment seat. So this leader Gallio uh, he doesn't want to hear these uh, Jews, uh, you know, arguments against against Paul. Let me read that in the Amplified. But when Gallio was proconsul of Achaia, southern Greece, the Jews made a united attack on Paul and brought him before the judgment seat. There's another footnote there. The 
proconsul tried cases from a large raised stone platform situated in front of his official residence. Well, that was, that's what it means by the judgment seat. Um, the Jews made a united attack on Paul and brought him before the judgment seat, declaring, this man is persuading people to worship God in violation of the law of Moses. But when Paul was about to reply, so Gallio, I mean, even before had, Paul didn't even have to give an answer. Paul, Gallio already made a decision. He didn't want to hear about this. Gallio said to the Jews, if it were a matter of some misdemeanor or serious crime, O oh Jews, I would have reason to put up with you. But since it is merely a question of doctrine within your religion, about words and names and your own law, see to it yourselves. I am unwilling to judge these matters. And he drove them away from the judgment seat. Verse 17. in the KJV. Then all the Greeks took Sosthenes, the chief ruler of the synagogue. That's interesting. Sosthenes sounds like a Greek name, but he's the chief ruler of the synagogue, and beat him before the judgment seat. And Gallio cared for none of those things. Hmm. Then, okay, so the Greeks beat Sosthenes. And Gallio didn't seem to care that the Greeks were beating the, the chief ruler of the synagogue. Uh, verse 18, and Paul, after he, this, tarried there yet a good while. I guess that uh, because the Jews were wasting uh, his time, Gallio's time, bringing these religious matters to him when he wants to only judge on, on uh, uh, not not religious things, but uh, uh, you know, just a civil law. Um, he uh, he didn't want to hear it, and the Greeks responded by thinking, "Well, we'll we'll give him a beating because he's wasted the the proconsul's time." Uh, verse 18, uh, let me read those verses in the Amplified. Um, Paul stayed for a while longer and then told, told the brothers and sisters goodbye and sailed for Syria. And he was accompanied by Priscilla and Aquila. Okay, I've jumped ahead in the Amplified. Let's go look at verse 18 in the KJV. And after Paul had this, and, and, af, but, and Paul, after this, tarried there yet a while, good while, when he, and then took his leave of the brethren and sailed thence into Syria, and with him Priscilla and Aquila. So Priscilla and Aquila, they continue on with Paul going off into Syria, having shorn his head in Kentria, for he had a vow. Hmm. Let's read verse 18 and amplify. Um, Paul stayed for a while longer and then told the brothers and sisters goodbye and sailed for Syria, and he was accompanied by Priscilla and Aquila. At Centria, the southern port of Corinth, he had his hair cut because he was keeping a Nazarite vow of abstention. Hmm. Uh, verse 19 of the KJV, And he came to Ephesus and left them there, but he himself entered into the synagogue. See? He says, I, for now I'm going on to the Gentiles. He said that several times now, I think. And he, but he cannot give up on the Jews. He, and he still goes to a new city and goes to the synagogue and reasoned with the Jews. 
when they desired him to tarry longer t time with them, he consented not. That seems surprising to me. Finally, he has Jews that are interested and, and they wanted to stay and continue teaching them. And he, he says no. Uh, but bade them farewell, saying, I must by all means keep this feast that cometh in Jerusalem. But I will return again unto you, if God will. And he sailed to Ephesus. Hmm. Verse 22. And when he had landed at Caesarea and gone up and saluted the church, he went down to Antioch. And after he had spent some time there, he departed and went over all the country of, of Galatia and Phrygia in order, strengthening all the disciples. So he's gone to all these places over the last few chapters. Since chapter 16, he's begun his, uh, his missionary journeys. And he's gone to many, many cities, preached the gospel, people believed, Churches are started, and then, of course, all these cities that are mentioned here, uh, uh, you know, we see later on, after Acts, we see all these letters from Paul uh, in Romans, Ephesians, Corinthians, and so on. And they, there's uh, these letters are letters he wrote to the churches that he established, uh, encouraging them and also and continuing to teach them, continuing and answering the the questions that they continue to have and trying to settle disputes and errors, particularly the errors of the Judaizers that continue coming in and tampering with his work. He teaches them how to be saved by faith alone in Christ alone and the Judaizers come in and say, no, Paul's wrong. It's not faith alone. You've got to practice Judaism too. So this, continuing all, this continues to be an ongoing issue where the Jew Jewish believers are not entirely on board with Paul and, and this message that faith alone is what's required. Uh, they still think that, no, you got to be circumcised. you got to follow the law of Moses. So this is really much of Paul's ministry is standing up for the principle that um, your faith must be entirely on Jesus. It cannot be divided between any part of Judaism and and, and, and and then also you believe in Jesus. No, you've got to reject circumcision, dietary laws, temple worship, animal sacrifices. Reject all of that entirely because if you still think that any of these things are required, then you're saying that your faith is not only in Jesus, but you, you believe. Believing means your, your faith is in this. You believe that these are also requirements. So that's why Paul says that if you add anything to the, to this, grace is no longer grace. That, that, that uh, your, your uh, salvation is actually nullified. There is no salvation if you mix grace and Judaism or grace and religious works. This is just an ongoing argument. Uh, and it's the argument even today on YouTube uh, we encounter all kinds of people that say faith alone is not enough. And they have a list of things that they add to it. Water baptism, following commandments, repenting of your sins, changing your life, on and on. And uh, that's the difference between biblical Christianity, what we learn from the Bible uh, and about how to be a Christian, what it, how to become a Christian, and, and what Christianity really is. They, it's based upon salvation being a free gift. Nothing's required on your part. Jesus did it all. Just believe in Jesus and what he's done for you. And, and, but the problem is, many people today, many people here as we read in the book of Acts and in the epistles, they never will accept this fact. They want to continue imposing other requirements on people. And this is why we see that much of the world today um, practicing various forms of so-called Christianity and the biggest false religious cult of Christianity are, is Roman Catholicism. They, if you ask any Roman Catholic, 
uh, if they're going to go to heaven and why, they do not base their salvation on faith in Jesus. They say, well, I, I think I'm going to go to heaven. I certainly hope so. I got my fingers crossed. And I, I just hope that I'm good enough that, you know, uh, I, I, I did get baptized as an infant. And I do attend church, and I go to confession and communion. I'm hoping that that is good enough, that God says, okay, you are a good enough Christian. Because um, if you're not good enough, you don't get to go to heaven. you got to either go to purgatory, or you just or you go to hell, based upon how far off you've missed the mark. So this is what most of... Christendom believes today that faith is not in Jesus is not enough, that there was religious efforts on your part that were also required. That's Roman Catholicism. That's easy, even much of Protestant uh, denominations today. They do not believe in the pure gospel, uh, that salvation is a free gift. And so uh, this is really the primary ministry of Paul is, is proclaiming that it's a free gift. No religious works are required. Don't tamper with this message. But the Judaizers continue following him wherever he sets up churches, tampering with his work, tainting the message. Um, now verse, uh, verse 24. And a certain Jew named Apollos, born in Alexandria, an eloquent man and mighty in the scriptures, came to Ephesus. So Apollos, Apollos is a Jew. He's very knowledgeable in the scriptures, and he's very eloquent. He came to Ephesus. This man was instructed in the way of the Lord, and being fervent in the spirit, he spake and taught diligently the things of the Lord, knowing only the baptism of John. So he, there's something missing in his understanding. Uh, verse 26, and he, he began to speak boldly in the synagogue, whom, when Aquila and Priscilla had heard, they took him unto, the, unto them and expounded unto him the way of God more perfectly. More perfectly is Paul's message that, wait a second, um, you're a Jew and you believe in Jesus, but you cannot continue having faith in your Judaism. You've got to understand that Judaism it does not uh, uh, has no part in your salvation. And this is what I'm speculating, Aquila and Priscilla explained to him uh, that so that he has a perfect understanding of the gospel. Verse 27, And when he was disposed to pass into Achaia, the brethren wrote, exhorting the disciples to receive him, who, when he was come, helped them much, which had believed through grace. For he mightily convinced the Jews, and that publicly, showing by the scriptures that Jesus was Christ. So they, Priscilla and Aquila, straightened out uh, Apollos, who was a Jew who believed in Jesus, but his faith was not entirely in Jesus. His faith was divided between Jesus and Judaism. And so Paul, uh, Priscilla and Aquila, who understood because of Paul's instructions to them that Judaism uh, plays no part in your salvation, and then they were able to straighten out Apollos. All right, that's the end of chapter uh, 18. So thank you for watching. And next time, I'll begin with chapter 19, verse 1. Bless you in the name of our great Savior God, Jesus Christ.